Before there were plugins and subscription plans for mixing and mastering, there was hardware. And the crazy thing about hardware, compression, and EQ is that it can work on your newest computer. No software update needed. Today, we're going back to the old days. We're mixing a whole song using the Need 1073 and a successor compressor. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. To hear the full song, click the card at the top right whenever it's released. In this video, we're just gonna show you what that process is like. And just say screw all the plugins, man. Just forget all the plugins, bro. We're just gonna mix a whole song, no plugins, only hardware. So first off, how do you plug all this stuff in? Basically, you need an interface with enough inputs and outputs. For this video, I'm using the Apollo X6. Shout out to Z Sounds for sending this to me. This has enough inputs and outputs. The best way to simplify it, the input on your interface is the output on your hardware and the output of your interface is the input of your hardware. How we're gonna get this stuff to work with stereo sound. I only have one Need 1073 and only have like one successor compressor and I have a distressor. Basically what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to record each side one at a time. And I will kind of coin this as like the poor man's console. Ever since I got the Need 1073, it also came with like this booklet just showing you some of their consoles and stuff like that, like the 8424. And it just really made me think, you know, so all these tracks on these consoles are really just preamps, EQs, and just compressors. So left and right are going into its own track. You can just record each track separately, one at a time. Basically, meaning if you just buy one of these preamps and one of these compressors, you can get the sound of a whole console. Okay, so I have a beat that I already made. Let's go ahead and open it up into Pro Tools and have everything tracked out. Real quick, I gotta give a shout out to one of our sponsors, DistroKid. If you're looking to upload your music to all streaming platforms, definitely check out Distro. Kid. That's what I use to upload all my music to streaming services. They have options like mastering your tracks to get you a high quality sound. If you're not great at mastering, don't worry about it. They got you covered. Everyone I work with, I make sure we use DistroKid so we can split the payments on royalties so we can all get paid from our work. Not only do you get 100% royalties from DistroKid, but they have really great affordable plans that help you get started as soon as possible to upload a limited amount of music. They have a lot of great options as far as promoting yourself here. As you can see, we got hyperfollow, mini videos, meme generator, promo cards, upstream, so many options available. Link in the description to get started today. Now back to the video. All right, gang, so I have the beat put up in Pro Tools and now what I got to do is go ahead and add my console into this thing. The way how you add your own poor man's console is you got to add your own tracks because we can't afford to have like a, a real console. You know what I'm saying? We can only afford just one track at a time. Let's just get 14 tracks or 16 tracks. The minimum tracks of a console. There are some with like two tracks, three tracks, four tracks or whatever. Uh, but let's just, let's just go with 16. You know what I'm saying? That's like the standard. You know what I mean? Make sure it's mono and uh, let's name it track. And if we name it track it should say track one track two all the way through 16 and uh boom there we go all right gang so i have my tracks here this will be my console here tracks one through 16 and i just want to put a little purple color on it then what you want to do is go ahead and go over to the first sound that you want to um, start with in my case i'll start with the piano the way how you put your console on this thing my hardware is plugged into five and six so make sure you use five and six and if you play this I only have one knee 1073 so this is going to be on one side for me, it's playing on the left. On the recording, it's probably playing mono. But so the way how we fix this is we go to search, go to down mixer, and then now you want to plug in your hardware, which will be for me is insert five. And now when we play this, it's playing in the middle so I can at least mix it. And then I can take off this down mixer, plug my hardware back in, go into a separate one or two track. Track one will be track five, which is what it's on right now. And then once I record this, go to track six, plug in the ins and outs on my interface into line six instead of five. And then I get the other side of the sound source, which will make it a stereo sound. All right, gang, so I have each side uh, recorded. Basically, you know, you just mix this one time and then record it on each track on one and two. Another thing that I like to do, since these two tracks are basically the same, is just a piano. Uh, why not just put it in a group? You know what I'm saying? So let's just name it piano. So next time I either mute this, it'll be both sides instead of just one track at a time. So let's just hear how much better is it actually?
I think it definitely has a lot more depth and more width than the sound. All right, gang, so I mixed the whole music with the console, left and right for the whole entire beat. So what we're gonna do is A-B the whole music with the console and without the console. We'll have the music part of the beat dry, no plugins, nothing right here. And uh, down here in the purple is with the console where I edited everything and I recorded each track one by one. When I mute the purple track, you're hearing the music without the console. And then when I unmute it, you're hearing with the console. Let me know what you think in the comments. Was all that worth it? It did take me a couple minutes, man. I'll probably say like 30 or 40 minutes just to get all that done. Let's go to the 808. All right, gang, so I have the 808 recorded with the hardware, and let's just see, comparing it to the actual real digital version of the 808, which actually is better. Is it worth getting all this hardware? You know, if you really just thinking about, oh, I just wanna get some hardware just to run the drums. Let's just see. You know, with the stuff that I have, did it actually work or not? What I'm gonna do is play the actual 808 first and then 808 with the console in the purple here. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe we just had a little bit too much compression. You know, I don't normally use compression on my 808, to be honest. So let's just turn off the compression and re-record that because I'm not satisfied. If you like the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button. All right, gang, so I had the 808 recorded in the hardware and uh, with no compression on there. Let's see if we get a better result this time. All right, so I actually think that one sounds a lot better now. I turned down the volume on the preamp a little bit more and no compression, tried to a little bit match the level of the digital and that gave me more of a cleaner sound. I think I'm actually satisfied with that. I like to line my tracks up like this. So now that I have this grouped up in its own little group, I can move this and hold down command on my keyboard with the Mac, I think it's Alt on windows i don't know and you can uh slide this over basically we're going we're doing a slip where you can move it over at any angle that basically look like it's about it or i could just hover over this and hold down command and try to get it exactly where it's supposed to be just to get 100 percent accurate as far as like where it's supposed to hit at okay so now i have the whole entire beat mixed through the console leveled out and everything like that so let's just go ahead and hear it exactly what it sounds like and then in editing i'm going to switch between the actual beat by itself playing with nothing, you know what I'm saying? So you're gonna hear the console and without the console. So let me know what you think. Did you like how it sounded? Honestly, I think it sounded pretty good. So let's just go ahead and record some vocals onto this whole thing. Okay, so these are my settings right here. I just went ahead and recorded everything and I just wanted to show you a picture of the settings that I use. You know, I just turned up my highs because I was using the U87. That's kind of a dark microphone. So just boosted some of the highs a little bit, boosted around uh, 700 Hertz, boosted on the lows around 110 Hertz. As you can see down here, three to one ratio, two milliseconds on 
the attack, 100 on the release. This side chain filter right here. For vocals, I think it's really best to leave it at 3K. That way it'll actually focus on that range a little bit more than the other ones. So it'll kind of act like a de a little bit. I really like that in the way how it sounds on vocals. You can get some really nice unique sounds. And you know, I just boosted up around 4 dB. After I had my vocals recorded with the Need 1073 and Successor Compressor, I didn't use it for the mixing stage, only the Need 1073 and the Distressor Compressor, which I'll get into in a little bit. But I did use my Successor Compressor just for the drums. As you can see, I used a limiter on it. I turned it all the way up just so I can put this whole entire drums on a separate aux, on its own aux, run this really, really hard so I can get some really nice drums with this here. Making the drum sound like it's hitting really hard without turning it all the way up. I normally use like a, a plugin for this, but since we're mixing with hardware and not plugins, why not do it on hardware? So with the uh, Neat 1073, turned up the highs a little bit, backed off the uh, low end a little bit, just so I can get a cleaner sound, turn on the high pan pass. Now let's move over to the distressor. Okay, so this is the distressor here. So the Neve is going directly into the distressor compressor here, only for mixing. You you know what I'm saying? Um, when I recorded this song, I did not use the distressor just because I wanted to try out some other stuff. You know, I'm liking the successor compressor for recording, but you know, this is really great for mixing as well. This distressor here. So I use this to like mix it in with the vocals a little bit more. That gave me a really nice sound. And I ran out of ins and outs because I'm using this over here, headphone amplifier, which is really great from Neve. And you know, I have a whole bunch of speakers here. So how do I got all this stuff plugged in? So basically, you know, with having both of these and all that plugged in, basically Basically, my Neve and my Distressor is um, connected to each other right now. And that is going directly into this boy right here, my Twin X. And that is how I add more ins and outs to this whole thing because, you know, we only got six inputs. This has two. And why not use the extra one on this, you know, to get some more inputs. And now let's hear the whole entire song. full song click the card at the top right did this make you want to pick up your hardware and get some really nice unique sounds I, honestly i think it's worth it you know what i'm saying especially when you mix the hardware with some plugins yeah you know the hardware sounded pretty good once you get some plugins in there you know say so we can go crazy and turn this thing to a whole nother level which is why you should click the card in the top right to hear the whole song let me know what other videos you want to see from me if you want to see any of my other videos click some of these buttons right here follow me on social media instagram tiktok link in the description and check out the music game.com if you want to get some templates i use a template from there on that song if you listen to it you guys stay safe peace